All right. <clears throat> now we're live. Live on Facebook, live on YouTube. And for those of you that uh, were on YouTube a minute ago, sorry, it was uh, set on the wrong camera. So I had to kind of change some settings real quick. All right, Mr. Greg, how you doing? Scott Schmid, welcome, buddy. Hey, you guys that are on uh, Facebook, I am trying a new microphone tonight. Um, so let me know how the audio sounds. Um, on the YouTube side, Mr. Jerry, I saw you uh, make a comment on the last one. Like I said, it was, it was set on the wrong camera for some reason. So, so anyways, as you guys come in, let me know who's here. A couple of you guys on the Facebook side have chimed in. Let me know who's chiming in on the YouTube side. Um, Mr. Jake, how you doing? Justin sounds good to me. Jay, hey boss, how you doing, bud? So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely let me know. Justin, I know you chimed in on the <clears throat> on the new microphone system over on the Facebook side. So um, definitely, definitely new setup here, trying to get better audio for you guys, um, better, better video, always trying to improve this all the time. So we got a couple of people popping in um, on the YouTube side. We'll give it a few more minutes and then we'll get going. So a uh, couple of things tonight, Mr. Jonathan Anderson or Alexander, how you doing, buddy? Jesse, hello, hello. So Elk Team 6, how you doing, buddy? So tonight we're going to talk about grunt tubes and, you know, kind of um, what what to look for, what's the differences in them, you know, advantages, disadvantages, but also too, do you guys remember a little giveaway we talked about a couple of weeks ago, a native by Carlton giveaway? Hmm. We might be announcing a winner tonight and we might even be talking about uh, a couple of other giveaways. So Mr. Jerry doing good. How are you, bud? Ryan Clark. Welcome. So, um, as always, um, answering questions live. So, if you have questions, feel free to put them in. So, let's get going. Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Michael Batiste. I'm from the Elk Calling Academy, and this is Wapiti Wednesday Live Q&A. Basically, what we do, if this is your first time attending um, a live Q&A session, we usually start with a topic or two. We'll kind of talk about that, and then throughout the process, as you have questions, fire away. We are definitely here to answer your questions and help you shorten that learning curve so that you find success faster in the Elk Woods. If you are on the YouTube side, be sure you hit subscribe to our channel and also click the bell notification so that way you are notified every time that we upload a video or we go live. Same thing on the Facebook page. Make sure you give it a like and you give it a follow so that way you know. Um, Jay, yes, sir. Been waiting. Let's get a winner. Uh, I've already done the drawing. I know who the winner is. Love everything you've got going on, man. So pumped for all your success. Jonathan, appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Hey. You guys may have seen this a little bit today. So round two. This thing is ridiculous. It is so easy to control. So I've already made kind of a, a recommendations for a couple of quick, uh, quick tweaks on it. We are getting closer and 
<clears throat> who knows? We may get to a point where we may just uh, select a few of you guys that um, you know are faithful uh, that are always here on Wapiti Wednesday Q and A, and we might send some out to you to uh, have you try and provide you know a little bit of feedback. So, Mr. Aiden, welcome, Joe McCarthy. How you doing, brother? John, Tim, hello, hello. How do you enter the drawing for future? Um, Elk Team Six. As far as giveaways, we normally do a um announcement video and then we normally have a link over on our facebook page or we'll put it in the comments on the youtube of of how to get entered so mountain tough welcome jerry dixon good evening uh, wow i like single double sounds good i like the pitch greg this is actually a one and a half uh you know i talked about it last week i am a huge fan of one and a half you know, if you get a tube that has a little bigger bell end on it. just gives a little bit more expansion to it. So, but that's a one and a half that we are working on. So Brad, that's a great hat. I hunt fit. Gotta love it. Sounds awesome. I'll try it for sure. How do you know I'm watching you? Joe, it actually, when you tune in on Facebook, it actually pops in and let me know when you guys are here. So I'll try it. Do you have a second to plug how to go about signing up for one-on-one -on -one lessons, etc.? Yes. So, um, Let's kind of cover that real quick, Justin, and then we'll dive into the grunt tubes and, and then get back on to um, answering questions. So easiest way to sign up for lessons. Uh, if you are on the Facebook page, you can simply hit message me. Um, send me a message there and we can kind of start the process talk about what you're looking for, options, that kind of stuff. And then we'll talk back and forth about uh, getting you on the schedule. I am starting lessons up the week of November 5th. So um, there you go. We're pretty wide open. If you are on the YouTube side, you can send me an email at michael at elkcallingacademy.com. And again, same process. Just let me know you're interested in the lessons and we'll kind of talk a little bit, find out about what you want, what you're looking for, and then get you on the schedule and get you kind of rolling. So, all right. Brian, hello. Greg, love it. Terry Jones, sounds awesome. Chris Gonzalez, the uh, Chuck E. Cheese drummer. So, can't wait. Okay. Uh, Mountain Top, Jerry, Bugle Me this just finished with Roddy and dog lessons. Now time for my education. Hi, all. Michael, my one and a half year old is loving this Wapiti Wednesday. That is awesome. I love that video that you sent. So, okay, let's dive into it. <clears throat> Grunt tubes. There's, there, there's a lot of options, you know, on the market. Size, how big around, length, all that kind of stuff. Do they really make a difference? They do. And really the larger tubes. So what I'm talking about that is the, the wolf of ball bat style. This is um, the unleashed tube from Phelps. You know, you also have the native by Carlton. You have the Wapiti Whacker from Bugling Bull. There's, there's a lot of different options out there on this style. Advantage of these is these actually allow your sound to expand a little bit. So they give you, you know, first let's kind of talk about what, is the purpose of a grunt tube. So a grunt tube basically is just, it's it's a megaphone, it's an amplifier. It's to give you a little bit more volume. It's to, you know, give you a little bit more bass to your calling. I mean, we're trying to emulate an animal whose lungs are twice the size of ours, whose esophagus, esophagus is twice the size of ours. So we have to cheat. That's where the grunt tube comes in to allow that expansion, to get us the deeper tones, to get us the more volume for reaching out. And you do have options in style. So, you know, you have straight tube style that for the longest time, this was your option. So then in the wiffle ball bat style, you have a lot of different sizes. This is the Chuckler XTR from Elknut. Um, you have the Wapiti Whacker from Bugling Bull Game Calls or Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. 
golden tone grunt tube from Barry. The new Unrivaled from Phelps, much smaller size. So let's let's kind of get into the advantages. So when we're talking about the bell end, and that's this down here, this is this is your bell end. This is where your sound expands. This is where it gets bigger. This is where your bottom ends pack that bump on it, that thump. So obviously the larger, and one of the larger ones out there on the market is the uh, Rump Shaker from Wapiti River Outdoors. That, man, that tube has some bass. It thumps really, really well. It's got some good, good bottom tones. So when you're first looking at the shape and design of a grunt tube, you need to kind of figure out what style of calling you're doing. You know, if you're an aggressive type caller, you are going to want a little larger tube, something that has a little bit more expansion to it that has more of that bottom end. If you're not necessarily wanting to sound like the big mamma jamma on the mountain, you don't have to go that big. Now, here's the deal. Just because you go with a big tube doesn't mean that you can't back off your calling by controlling the diaphragm read and controlling your air and sounding like a smaller bull. So that is one advantage that the wiffle ball bat style has over the skinny tube size. The wiffle ball bat style is going to expand more on your bottom end. But the disadvantage is, is they're usually bigger. They're bulkier. They don't wrap around your body. They're a solid piece. But honestly, when you put this over your shoulder and it's riding vertically on your back next to your pack, you don't even know it's there. So now let's say your style is packing in you like to pack in six, seven, eight, nine miles, 10 miles. So weight to you is an issue. That's important. That's where this style smaller and the two new tubes. Well, the Berry Golden Tone has been on the market for a while. The Unrivaled from Phelps just came out this year. Now here's what's funny. Um, for those of you that have followed the channel, you know for the last couple of years, I've done a grunt tube challenge where I get off camera and I blow on the tubes and you guys vote based on the tones, based on what you're hearing. The two lightest tubes in the whole entire lineup finished first and second this year. The golden tone grunt tube from Barry Game Calls was the top vote getter and the unrivaled was right behind it. So the nice thing about those styles is you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get the lightweight packability of them, but you also get some good expansion and good tones. So you have that ability to get the good depths, you get the good volume. And the neat thing about the golden tone is the golden tone does have a little bit of flex. So if you do have it on your back, you can still leave it under your arm and call and be directional with your calling without having to turn your head or point that tube a different direction like you do with the straight wiffle ball bats. Now, speaking of wiffle ball bats, I see this all the time from people. Why would I spend money to these call manufacturers when I can just go spend $9 or $7 or whatever at Kmart or Walmart and buy a wiffle ball bat and make one myself? Yes, you can, but you need to understand the process that these companies go through. A lot of those wiffle ball bats that you buy are extremely thin walled, which means they crush very easily. And when you blow through them, you have that plastic vibration that does add into your sounds. All of these call manufacturers have gone through testing before they made their mold, meaning they played with different thicknesses plastic to get you the best quality sound. So yes, you are spending more money than if you went to the store but there's a reason for it. There is a process to develop each of these grunt tubes as far as the bell end, the thickness of plastic, but then also the important thing that a lot of people don't realize is one of the important pieces is how big this hole is in the end. 
if you make this too large, you don't have any back pressure. Well, what is back pressure? Back pressure is <clears throat> what holds those notes and holds the air into that grunt tube. That is a benefit to you as a caller. Back pressure allows you um, note stability and it actually benefits with note transition. <clears throat> so instead of your air just flooding out of the tube, it's actually held back a little bit so the air is not flooding out of your lungs, which means you can control your notes. You can hold your notes. You can do your transitions a lot easier. So back pressure is important. So again, these call manufacturers, when they're designing these tubes, there's a lot of calculations that go into it. It, it's, you know, the size of the opening to create the back pressure. It's the thickness of the walls. There's also things that they do inside the tube to help those sounds kind of roll around and mix to get you the best quality sounds that you have or can. And, and that's, that's one thing that we're really trying to do when we're out there hunting is we're trying to produce good sounds. We're trying to emulate, you know, the elk. So there is... <laughs> It, it, it's not like these guys are just basically, you know, jumping from the wolf of ball bat style, kind of building in the same way and charging us $30, $40. There is a process in this. So there is a reason behind it. Now, a few other differences or options that you have within grunt tubes is the size of the mouth opening. Okay. You have flared ends you have small ends. And then in this case, with the Wapiti Whacker from Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls, you actually have a piece that gives you the option to where you have the small mouthpiece if you want it, or you can snap this piece on and then you get a flared mouthpiece. Now, is there a difference? Yes, there is. So I actually, I've evolved over the years. I started with the small, went to the flared, but I find myself lately going back to the small mouthpiece. So for me personally, that's just kind of what I like. Now, you also have, you know, some options to where like Native by Carlton is actually churning their mouthpiece out of acrylic to where you have the same option, just like you do on the Rocky Mountain, to where you can go small in, or you can put that flared mouthpiece in and have the flared. So you do have options. Now, a third option with those. So while you're learning to call and trying to figure out, you know, the diaphragm read, um, there are companies out there that make... Um, external read, but like this is the Chuckler XTR from Elk Nut, where it actually comes with the Conqueror mouthpiece from Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls in it. So while you're learning to call on a diaphragm, you have the ability that you can actually do bugles. And then once you get proficient with that diaphragm read, you can actually just pop this right out. And then you have, you know, a normal grunt tube. So that kind of gives you some options, some ideas. Now, I know there's a few guys out there that don't even use grunt tubes. They just bugle with their voice. Or I bet this has never happened with anybody. You've left camp and you forgot your grunt tube at camp. So you drank the bottle of water or the bottle of Gatorade that you had. You got out your knife and you cut the end of it. And you made a makeshift grunt tube out of that water bottle or that Gatorade bottle. This is a new option on the market, the Game Changer, which is only four inches long. The neat thing about this is this actually, and you guys have heard me talk about this, this has two baffles on the inside that build that back pressure so that your note stability and note changes are there in a small compact call that you still operate this with a diaphragm, you still bugle on it. But the neat thing about this is now you have two different ends. You have the large end and you have the small end. So you can bugle through the small end, turn it around and do your cow calls through the big end. So 
This year, I actually took up pretty much almost all of the grunt tubes that I showed you guys and use them with different combinations just because I wanted to see how they all performed, how they all sounded. And, and honestly, I had a couple of tubes that I've only blown on here in the house. I've never called on them out hunting. And uh, I took them up. And the first time I called on them was either during the season or during the 2018 Grunt Tube Challenge. And a couple of them really, really surprised me on the sounds that they produce. Um, I've kind of changed what I'm looking for in a diaphragm or, or in, a, in a Grunt Tube just because of what I'm starting to see the transition of the elk doing with their volumes and with their tones and, and, and this and that. I mean, you, you know, years past it was, it was, you know, get the big tube, get the reed that you can get max volume, max high pitch and just ring those canyons. Well, it's kind of changed here recently. And we really noticed it this year with the elk being a lot softer on their tones and, and not as loud. Um, but the thing that I noticed is, you know, they did a lot more of your chuckles and your your huffs and your grunts and your whines. And 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 so that's where a good combination of kind of a mid-sized tube that had good back pressure that still allowed you decent volume, but still had a good thump on the bottom end. So a few of my favorite tubes are the Unrivaled and the Unleashed from Phelps, the Berry Golden Tone Grunt Tube, the Wapiti Whacker from Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. And there is a new tube that is in development right now that um, kind of combines kind of a few different features of a few different tubes on the market that uh, getting really, really close. Um, you guys may have seen a few teaser picks here and there. So um, once we get a little bit closer, I'll kind of explain that a little bit more, show it a little bit more. So, all right, let's see. Do, 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 do. Stephen Elliott, how you doing? Kevin, I'm an aggressive caller. My hunting partner's nicknamed me Checkmate. I like it. Bernie, hello, hello. Tim, getting here late tonight. But I made it. My season starts this Saturday, hoping to get my first this year. Best of luck to you, Tim. So Bryce Scott, Brad, I can feel the back pressure actually gives me way more control of my diaphragm. Exactly. And that's that's what that back pressure is there for, is to give you the control. Benito, how you doing? Um, Elk Team 6, are there any good external read bugles that are good? Yeah, there actually are. That Conquer mouthpiece that I showed you is uh, a really, really good mouthpiece. And, and really, honestly, the Power Bugle. The Power Bugle is a, a very easy external read bugle to operate and run that has had success year after year after year for many years. And I've got some... I've got success with the Wapiti Whacker this year for me. Cool. So, so that's kind of a little backstory on grunt tubes and what they are and, and the reasons behind them and why they're shaped the way they are. So uh, the biggest thing I can say, guys, is, is these companies are putting a lot of time and a lot of money into development of these tubes. Support them it does make a difference. Now I understand if you're on a limited budget and you know, I get it. Your only option is to go pick up one of those wolf ball bats and tink, but here's the deal. Figuring out length and mouthpiece and things to cut down the plastic vibration, the hole in the side, you might end up going through three or four of those by the time you get one that really like that you like or that sounds good or does what you want it. Well, by the time you start going through three or four of those, you're pretty much pretty dang close to the price that you can get some of these tubes for where these companies have already done that work for you. So 
Okay, if you guys have specific questions about grunt tubes or you want to hear any of these, um, go ahead and throw them in the comment section. Um, in fact, I'll just I'll just do a quick demonstration here so you can hear kind of the difference. So I'll blow on this straight. So that kind of sh just shows you a little bit the difference between a straight and kind of the one of the wiffle ball bat styles. Now, the thing with this straight is you don't have a lot of back pressure. So you have to create your own back pressure on these. Just keep that in mind. But the advantage of this, they're flexible. So as they're riding over your shoulder, you're sitting here doing this with the ability to point it all the different directions. So... All right. Um, can you mix in a couple external reed bugles here? I don't know how good the reed is on this. So you're going to put me on the spot. That reed's pretty tore up, but um, that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of that external reed bugle. So um to, 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 to. any input on external read cow calls who oh, you're you're asking about a whole other different avenue with that one justin um open read cow calls there's there's a lot of different options out there there's a lot of good companies you know thick read thin read um, single, double, and maybe we will just do an episode on external read um, cow calls. So if you guys interested in something like that, let me know and we'll we'll make it happen on a future episode. So Greg, can I hear you rip the new read through the elk nut tube? Yeah. Okay, there you go, Greg. There is the elk nut. Steve Shelley, how you doing? Scott, what's the best way to carry a tube? I tried lots of different positions and always ended up banging in branches, my bow, et cetera, and making a bong sound. That is, so there's, there's two companies on the market that have this stretchable. And I really like this type of lanyard just because I can suck it down tight. So that way, when I put it over my shoulder and on my pack, it basically is just right in vertical, just like that, right, right next to my pack. I found that is the best way to carry it. And if you have a pack that has um, water bottle pockets, you can actually take the end of this and stick it down in there while it's over the shoulder and it'll stay right there. There's going to come a time that it's going to bang on a branch or this or that. And that's where these tube tamers from Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls really comes into play. Because this deadens the sound. I mean, it still has a little bit of plastic sound, but it stops the vibration of that plastic. So it doesn't sound as bad as if you didn't have those on at all. So, um also, Scott, just just wait a little bit with the new tube that uh, is coming. That's that's going to kind of help with packing a tube as well. So, Lucas Carlton's. Okay, you want to hear the Carlton tube? This is still a prototype. <laughs> It doesn't have quite the expansion or the volume as, as some of the other tubes for the, on the market, um, but a little bit of that difference.
small end versus the flared end, you do get a little bit of difference in your tone um, between the flared end and the small end mouthpiece. Volume difference between the Phelps Unrivaled and Phelps Unleashed. Let's just see. So, first the Unleashed. Now the new Unrivaled. There is a little bit of difference, but that's going to be understandable because of the different size of the bell housings and the amount of expansion that you're allowing in those two tubes. But it's not a huge difference. So, all right. Never thought about elastic. Chris, can we hear the unrivaled? There we go. I like using surgical tubing to hold the tube right to my body uh, while also making it easier to take it off. Yeah, Joe, anything with that stretch, surgical tubing, um, some of the, uh, uh, in fact, the, the berry grunt tube, that golden tone grunt tube comes with that elastic style bungee also as well. So. Jonathan, just want to thank you again for everything. Our lessons and conversations helped kick the year off right. Can't wait for the next chapter. Jonathan, you've got a lot of things going, and I'm just ecstatic for you, buddy. So tight, not right. Okay, over on YouTube side, will this new tube be an Elk Calling Academy product? That's awesome. If so, no, it's not. It is actually a native by Carlton product. So... Um, but have been given, you know, quite a bit of feedback to, uh, you know, Mark, while we're working on, you know, developing a couple of diaphragm reads, we're also talking about grunt tubes. Um, you know, a lot of you guys have really put input in on the diaphragm reads. We are listening. We are paying attention. Keep it up with tubes. Also, if, if you've got something in the design that you're looking at, one thing I know that it will definitely have for sure is this acrylic mouthpiece, which is extremely, extremely comfortable. So it is a, a great mouthpiece. So gotta go, Shelly has her new knee. Joe, thanks for popping in. Hopefully uh, Shelly's recovery is going really well. So Tim, I got the Rocky Mountain Bully Bull too. What's your opinion? I don't know what to look for and couldn't find any local pro shop guys that knew anything about reeds or tubes. Actually, the Bully Bull tube, the original Bully Bull with the small end, I absolutely love that tube. I still have the very first one um, when that tube came out, when when I was part of Rocky's team and still have it. In fact, I broke it out and used it uh, this year. So the Bully Bull is a great tube. So I would recommend that one, certainly. Favorite tube for lip ball. You know, Justin... When you're first learning the lip ball, a flared end is sometimes easier to learn. Um, but, you know, everybody's a little bit different. Some people have a better time with the flared end. Some people like the smaller end. Um, like I said, I'm transitioning back to the smaller end on the tube. I just, I, I, to me, the, 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 the tones are better. The back pressure is better. Um, but it's something that I'm used to that, that I've called on for a pretty long time. So elk nut tube sounds really good. Jerry, yeah, it is. The, the chuckler is a good tube. I also know that elk nut does have a new tube coming out for 2019 that is a smaller tube. I haven't seen any pictures of it. I don't know what shape or anything about it. But hopefully as soon as it does come available, I'll get my hands on one and uh, do a review of that for you guys. So I use Elk Nuts Chuckler Tube. Jerry has great tone and volume. It's sure sounding good. Need a tube wrap with a pocket for reeds. Um, there's a few out there, but honestly, Jerry, I really like this. This is from Bendable Products. It holds four reeds, has a magnetic pouch, but the neat thing is, is it has Velcro on the back so that you could take the lanyard off and you could actually put this, you know, on the strap of your pack or your bino harness. So I really, really like this new reed pouch that Bendable Products just came out with this year. So 
All right. Two. Will this native call you're working on have a little longer shelf life than the Marco, if that's fair to ask? You know, we're we're still. I, I, I mean, this this read right here, Jonathan. It's just the second edition. It's it's the second version. We're still fine te- fine tweaking, fine tuning it. Um, you know, really trying to find that good combination. And you know, I asked when started this process, what was more important to you guys, a read that right out of the package, you could do all the sounds that you wanted to, or something that you had to break in, but would last longer. And everybody's saying something right out of the package. That's that fine line when it comes to a diaphragm read that you guys need to understand. So if you have a read that right out of the package, you can do all the sounds on, um, it, it, it's it's not stretched as tight so that you have that ability to do all those things. Well, that means it's going to get overstretched or it's going to stretch out faster than maybe something that you have to break in a little bit. But that is every call manufacturer's dilemma, trying to find the right combination of a diaphragm read that gives the tones, the qualities, but also the longevity of life. And you know, as materials advance, technology advances, it's getting better. I mean, the new tapes that are coming out on the market are pretty much acid resistant, the acids in your saliva. So your tape is lasting longer. And as far as longevity on a diaphragm read, there's so many variables that go into that because everybody's acidic level in their saliva is different. So obviously people that have a high acidic level that latex and that diaphragm read is going to break down faster and it's not going to last as long. Also, how do you take care of your reads? How much do you blow on a read? So if you guys think about to last week when I said on a on a seven to 10 day hunt, figure three diaphragm reads for that time. Okay, that should tell you when you're out hunting how much you're blowing on that diaphragm read, how long those should probably last. Now, for some of you guys that practice a ton, you are going to go through reads faster than other people. So if you're talking to your buddies and and your buddies are like, man, I get two months out of my reads and you're getting two weeks. Well, you're probably somebody that's calling on that every single day for an hour or two hours. You are constantly calling on that diaphragm read or your buddy maybe only calls once or twice a week. There's so many variables. Don't compare yourself for how long your reads last com- as compared to somebody else's. It's not a fair comparison. So, and, and and it might be, yeah, you might be using different reads. You might be using different manufacturers. And all of a sudden you're thinking, well, shoot, that manufacturer over there, their reads lasting longer. There's all these variables that come into it. So, so Jonathan, we're doing the best that we can. So. Uh, Michael Meyer heading out for rifle season this weekend. Any advice for late calling? We were thinking the light cow sounds here and there. Absolutely. The cow sounds. So Primos makes a reed pouch that holds 10 diaphragms. Yeah. Yeah. You can also get, you know, other styles out there that look like a coin purse that, yeah, you could fit 10 diaphragms, a dozen diaphragms or, or, or yeah, you can carry a bunch. In fact, bendable products makes one too, that I carry, you know, both styles. So the, the one with the four, those are my top four. And then I have backups, you know, in the other. So, but yeah, Phelps has one out. Um, Rocky mountain hunting calls has one. I, I mean, there's, there's a lot of call pouches out there that will carry multiple diaphragm reads. So Mr. Brad hunt, Mr. Miles, Johnny, how we doing? Scott Brown. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, can we hear the Carlton tube with the Rocky Mountain Reaper or Black Magic? I love both of these and use them with my Phelps and Wapiti Whacker. Oh, you're gonna put me on the spot. Okay, this is this is the other tube pouch that Bendable Products makes. Black Magic or Wapiti? Or, uh, okay, Reaper or Black Magic? Hmm. 
Okay. Scott, there you go. Reaper, Black Magic, new Carlton tube. Reaper first. <laughs> Now black magic. Ooh, been a while since I'd blown on those reeds. So don't pull those out very often. So those, those are both really, really good reeds that uh, Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls came out with this year. Okay. What kind of signs are there to tell when you should replace your reed? So, um, good question. Pretty much when that reed won't hold notes on a bugle anymore, meaning you're really in your in your high note of your bugle and it's struggling to hold that note or it keeps popping out of that note, that's usually a good time. You can still do all of your cow sounds on that, but because bugling, since you're putting more pressure on that reed, that will really test the reed there. So if you notice your reed's no longer holding your note, especially at the high note when you're bugling, it's time to swap it out. All right. Um, I paired that tube with an Elk 101 All-Star reed. Want to try out that native by Carlton, a one and a half you've been raving about. Tim, the the, the one and a half is, is a great reed. Um, hold off for a little bit on the native. So, um, I mean, you can you, you can certainly get the one and a half and uh, try it. It is it is a great read with some great tones. I really like the direction that uh, we're heading with these new reads. So, I wrapped my unleashed in a thin rubberized floor underlayment, and it helped with the noise in the field. It didn't change the tone. Yeah, there's all kinds of things that I've heard people do. You know, the rubberized tool coatings. Uh, flex seal, you know, all, all kinds of different stuff to eliminate that plastic vibration. So Bernie, you're doing an awesome job, brother. Thanks for all your help. Appreciate that. Johnny, Lyle. Okay. Justin, in your opinion, what's the difference between a challenge bugle from a large mature bull to a young bull, if that makes any sense? You know, as a bull gets more mature, you really start noticing the difference in his bottom end, you know, in, 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 in when he comes down off the bugle and whoa, you, you know, that bottom end there is a lot deeper. Um, you know, he's going to have, I, I mean, there's just more energy to that challenge bugle. Um, you get a good mature bull that really rips a good solid challenge bugle in your face. You're going to feel it to your soul where a younger bull, it's not going to have quite the intensity. It's not going to have that bottom end. It's, 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 it's going to be, yeah, that was a challenge bugle, but you really hear a mature bull do that close. And you're like, wow. Like I said, you, you, you feel it. It just knocks your socks off. It's, it's pretty easy to tell. And it's, it's not even on the same plane. So, all right. Um, Black Magic was very effective for me this year. Yeah, it's a great read. Uh, that's the only read that reads I used. Good, good. So, you know, that's one thing that I love about all of you guys is we have Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls users. We have Native by Carlton users. We have Phelps users. You know, we have some Primos users. This is one thing that is great. And it, it, as far as the students without calling Academy 2, there's not one brand that I really push when it comes to diaphragm reads. It's on, on a student's finding that diaphragm read that fits that student the best, because that's what's going to make you a more successful caller is finding the read that fits your palette style and the way that your airflow goes over that read. And there is a difference. So um, that's why I definitely recommend trying different reads, really trying what works and fits best with you guys. So, okay. So Justin, I hope that kind of answered your question, Larry. That's why I want to start out with at least six because when I'm at work, I blow on them all the time. Yep. So 
I thought that was an awesome call. If that means anything, lots of control with the Marco. Just wish I could have ran the same read a little longer. Still impressed with our, regardless. Yeah, Jonathan, I need to get on the on, on the phone with um, Travis from Wapiti River and see if we can figure out some way or something to get more of those Marcos here in the U.S. We really, really had a tough time getting them through customs and getting them across the border because there's a lot of people that really liked them. Uh, those reads worked really, really well for them and they want more. So I am working on it. So, okay. Bernie was out scouting for my cousin elk hunt in November and heard some bulls still bugling. Yeah, actually I'm getting reports all over that there's still bulls that are bugling, still chasing hot cows. So, you know, it's kind of in a, in a post rut time frame right now. Um, you know, it's, it's a couple of weeks behind, so definitely a later rut this year. So for those of you guys that are heading out hunting right now, you are going to see post rut activity. Um, so some light bugling might be effective, but, um, I still would, would focus more on the cow sounds. All right. What else we got? Steven James, how you doing? Uh, totally ripper. Freddie, how you doing, bud? Stephen James, holy crap, I made it. Yeah, and actually, Stephen, we're announcing the uh, the winner tonight of the Native by Carlton giveaway and the sheds and the cover scent. So uh, late, but here I meant crap. Uh, thanks, sounds great. I th think that might be one of the tubes for my son. I want to get him something a little different than what I use. So uh, won't sound the same next year. Good plan. Loving my green amp so far. Managed to rip 10 successful bugles off before. Okay, never able to do that before. That's cool. So um, yeah, Stephen, glad that uh, amp's working for you. Make a trip to Canada. Yeah, I know. Terry, I know you're one of the ones that wants more of the Marcos too. So able to touch about difference between the don't um, if you could recommend one tube for a beginner what would it be so many tubes to choose from and trying to get prepared for a hunt next year okay jesse this really depends on your budget so on the lower end of the budget this golden tone grunt tube from Barry is a great tube. I think it's $24, $25. I think he actually had them on sale for $22. Um, but It is a tube that has really good sound. In fact, that's one of the ones that really impressed me this year. So bottom end budget, the golden tone grunt tube from Barry Game Calls. Middle of the road budget is going to be your Chuckler XTR. And then on the upper end, I really like the Unleashed from Phelps. And I do cut the flared end off of it just because I like the small end. So. So there's three to choose from. Check your budget, see which one of those really falls into your budget and any of those. Hmm. I see we have a fan over on uh, YouTube. So anyways, okay. Uh, let's see. Two, 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 two. What is it you're drinking? Um, this is actually a... Um, Seismic, it's a product from Ready Nutrients, um, branch chain amino acids. So um, Ready Nutrients is, is pretty much the company that um, I use for my whey protein, uh, aminos, uh, electrolytes, all that kind of stuff. So if you're not familiar with uh, Ready Nutrients, go check them out. Donnie Howell is a great guy, great company. Definitely love their, uh, love their products. So Good night, brother. Not feeling good. Thanks again. Bernie, hey, thanks for tuning in. Hope you get to feeling better. Do you find switching up reads gets a different response from bulls and cows? Like if they aren't excited about one and you switch reads, do you get more response? Sometimes I will, um, but I switch reads for a different reason. 
maybe I want to read that has a little bit more volume or reaches a little bit higher pitch, but most of the time it's more volume. I'll switch a read, but a lot of times, and, and, and I mean, especially, you know, this year saw it a lot. There were quiet days this year, um, not getting any responses. You know, the red activity just wasn't seem, seeming to go. In, in those cases, I will set up and I will do more of blind calling scenarios to create that excitement, to get them bugling. But yeah, sometimes I may switch to a different read just to see if a little bit different pitch or maybe a little higher tone will um, get them to kind of respond a little bit. So that's funny. We haven't had one of those on the uh, live feed yet. So different dome shapes for, or a ramp on some of the different reads. I love the game changer. <laughs> so thanks so much. Okay, so let's do this real quick. So the Native by Carlton giveaway that we ran a couple of weeks ago, um, it was basically for a Rip It one and a half from Native by Carlton, a Rip It 450 from Native by Carlton, a hat, a shirt, a sheds rack that hangs from your rear view mirror, and a bottle of cover scent. The winner is Todd Bashaw from La Crosse, Wisconsin. Um, it was actually him visiting the Native by Carlton Instagram page that he was drawn on. So Todd, congratulations. I have your email address. I will be sending you an email to get your shipping information. The packages are going to come from Native by Carlton directly and from Stephen James directly. So I would like to thank both Native by Carlton and Stephen James for, um, offering to uh, give some goodies away and allow us to do these giveaways. We do have another giveaway coming up that is going to be a combination of a game changer call and some scents from Hot on the Trail Scents. So I will be announcing that giveaway shortly. Friday, I got some videos done and edited, guys. So Friday, the pack dump video. What do I carry in my pack? That video is going to go live Friday at 6 p.m. on the YouTube channel. I will share it over to Facebook. I also got um, a video done on decoys and scents. I got another one recorded about the knickknack sacks on the Black's Creek guide gear. And also in this pack dump, um, it's also a little review of the answer 1500 cubic inch from Black's Creek guide gear. So uh, Charles evening, just getting on, looking forward to lessons after the fifth. Yes, yes, yes. We are getting going with lessons. I know a lot of you guys have, uh, reached out about getting those scheduled and getting going. So Andrew, I spent the year learning how to hit the high notes on bugles only to have the elk calling it a whisper and running away from the loud bugling I was doing live and learn. So Andrew, that's an, that, that's a prime example of what I talk about, with matching your surroundings. And yeah, a lot of the two, a lot of the reads that are produced, you know, here lately are really produced and made to generate that really high pitch and that loud volume. And I know in a lot of areas, elk are really kind of starting to turn the volume down. And, and that's why this year I really use that rip at one and a half and that rip at 450 a lot more because I could still hit those high notes, but at a much lower volume. Now, as you call on a read and you really get comfortable with a read, and especially if you learn using your diaphragm and controlling your air pressure, you can take a read that is designed for max volume and you can really turn that volume down and mimic those elk. But that really goes hand in hand with what we talk about quite a bit about matching your surroundings and pay attention to what the elk are doing around you and matching your calling to what you're hearing. And that's what is really going to increase your number of call-ins and your number, you know, your chances of success out there, your shot opportunities. It's just, it's, it's, it's going to increase dramatically out there. So, all right. 
How do we get entered for the drawing again? So Matt, I will actually announce the next drawing in a separate video. And in that video will be the link over to the giveaway page and it will have again it's going to be like all of our giveaways where you have opportunities for multiple entries uh we'll do it just like we always do where we run it for a couple of weeks so i just need to get with freddie from game changer and mark over at haunt on the trail and just finalize kind of uh, packages, how many were given away, how many winners and all that kind of stuff before I do the video. So, so a couple of loose ends that I have to tie up before we actually announce that, but stay tuned. Um, that video will be coming soon. Um, also another contest that started last night for those of you that are members of I hunt fit, that you are, I hunt fit members that are on or within that I hunt fit members page over on Facebook. Go check it out. There is a calling contest that is going right now. You have until Sunday to get your entries in. Then I am going to pick the top three winners and I am going to announce those next Wednesday on the live Wapiti Wednesday Q&A. Also on that page and guys, Unfortunately, this is a contest that I Hunt Fit is doing for their their members, um, and uh, they just asked me if I would judge it. So, um, but I don't even know what the prizes are. So I'm sure the video over there will do it. Scott, this year I heard more chuckles and short, quiet bugles than anything. I heard it referred to as bedded bugle. No, a, a bedded bugle is 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 just kind of just a bull that's just you know, short. The the softer bugles, you know, and we heard the same thing this year, is they'll go into the thicker timber, they'll really turn that volume down on their bugles and really focus on the chuckles because those don't carry as far. You see a lot of that activity in areas that have really high hunting pressure or a pretty good predator population. They don't want those sounds to really carry out there because anytime they get loud, they get vocal, they just get pressured by hunters or they get harassed by predators. So, and I've really started to see this transition over the last couple of years where the volume has really started getting softer and softer. They're more into that heavy timber when they are doing calling. So again, match your surroundings, pay attention to those things. So Mr. Garrett Weaver, welcome, welcome. Ah, for those of you that did not see that announcement, um, a couple of weeks ago, I sat down with Garrett Weaver again. He has a podcast on point with Garrett Weaver. Um, that actually just went live the first of this week. So if you have not gone over to uh, the On Point with Garrett Weaver page, you can actually just do a Google search for On Point from Garrett Weaver, and you can listen to that podcast that we did where we kind of recapped our seasons, and we talked about a couple of situations that both of us found ourselves in. And, you know, he asked a couple of questions about situations he was in, and it was it was a lot of fun. So hopefully you guys will go over, support him and uh, listen to that. So, Scott, that's exactly what I heard. But from bulls that were up and moving. So, yeah, it's it's you know, part of it, too, is they're That's almost more because if they're up and moving and they're doing that, it's it's almost like they're kind of doing an advertising bugle is really what they're doing, Scott. So they. um they're just moving around. They're just doing this low bugle. They're just trying to basically broadcast and advertise for cows. Hey, here I am. Come check me out. And that's basically what they were doing. So Tim, is it safe to assume a calf in distress call would not be quiet? No. Um, Tim, with, with the calf in distress, you want volume, you want panic, you want that urgency in it. So that is not going to be a call that's going to be quiet because that one you're really, you're putting a lot of emotion into that call. So you are trying to sound distressed. You really are trying to attract. So, uh, okay. Could you pinpoint the rut in your area this year or were they just quiet even while running? So, um, uh, 
No, actually, the the elk rut happened late. So, like I said, it was it was a couple of weeks behind. Um, you know, a lot of areas. It, it wasn't until, um, you know, that first part to mid part of October that they really, really started rutting with full on rut with bulls screaming, bulls chasing cows. So, um, you know, usually it's kind of that third week in September. Here it was. It it didn't happen until the second to third week of October. So um, that's why right now we're kind of in that post rut activity. So it definitely was a later rut this year. So uh, great on point podcast. Highly recommend it. Yes, Garrett does a great job with this podcast. And he actually does a lot of cool things, guys. Um, he does a lot of testing of arrows. So for some of you maybe looking for arrow setups, so you can get some uh, good useful tips over there. So uh, Michael, thanks for another great Wapiti Wednesday in your time. Jerry, it's my pleasure. Thank you for tuning in. Ryan Clark, I've been checking Garrett's YouTube page and it's not up there yet. I don't know if it's mine or if it hasn't posted. No, Ryan, it's not up on his YouTube page. So you might actually, like I said, if you just do a Google search um, and just, just type in on point with Garrett Weaver, that's actually how I found it on the computer. Or um, if you have an iPhone, the, the podcast, you can go into the libraries and you can find his podcast there and, and listen to it for free as there as well. So uh, y'all need to check out the new possible Western Nebraska state record. Uh, Jerry, Nebraska state record, whitetail. What, what, uh, what state record are you talking about? So, okay. So little bit more time. So we're at that hour mark. So we're going to kind of start wrapping it up. So if you guys have any last minute questions, be sure to throw them in. Um, Michael Meyer, thanks for your time and research. You are very welcome. Thank you for tuning in and, and watching. John, have a great night, Mike. Thank you so much for all great Wapiti Wednesday. John, thanks for tuning in tonight. Brian, I'll be seeing you soon. I won the OHA package with the two sessions. So excited to learn from you. Brian, I'm looking forward to working with you. Congratulations on the win. That's a heck of a package that you walked away with. Luke, thanks again. Thank you for tuning in. So Jerry Elk, of course. Well, you, you, you said Nebraska, Jerry. So I'm, I, I'm sorry. You know, um, I guess Nebraska is not really a state that I think of for an elk destination, but uh, no, that's, that's cool. I'll have to do some research and take a look at it. So, um, Jerry Meese, thanks, man. You're welcome. So, Jay Colley, thank you for your hard work. You know, this is all for you guys. I, I couldn't do this if you guys weren't tuning in and watching this. GC calls, great stuff. Missed the first part. Sorry, brother. You are very, uh, no need to say sorry there, Freddie. So, thanks, so, yeah, because of you guys tuning in and the support that you guys give us, that allows us to work with companies like GC Calls, Native, um, you know, some of these companies that uh, provide us with products to give away. So um, it's all because of you guys and your support. So Jerry Dixon, 451 inch bull. So Jerry Mees, what was your email again? So it's Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L at Elk callingacademy.com. Terry, have a good night as well. So, all right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. So hopefully that kind of answers your questions on grunt tubes, kind of clears it up as clear as mud, maybe. I know there's a lot of options, so hopefully kind of narrowed it down a little bit to help you. Uh, Scott, thanks again for all your calling lessons. Looking forward to my son taking lessons with you. Scott, look forward to it. So, all right, guys, as always, thanks for tuning in. I I'm humbled and I greatly appreciate your support. And as always, keep calling, keep practicing, but most importantly, have fun. Come back on Friday for the pack dump and we will see you guys live next week for the next episode of Wapiti Wednesday Live Q&A. Have a great night, everybody.